Hey everybody! Welcome back to Northern Lion Place of Binding of Isaac Afterbirth. I was gonna say Rebirth. Where's that muscle memory coming from? Hopefully from the same place that allowed me to get that uh, 100 plus streak. Ooh. TLPS ZAQW. Seems like decent damage. Rate of fire honestly seems fine, but that might be an illusion created by shot speed. Uh, we also have Telepathy for Dummies and Common Cold. And Lucky Toe, which as far as trinkets go, is not useless. So, uh, Telepathy for Dummies is, like, the most boring, semi-useful book. It's half of Homing Tears, every other room. Which is like, okay, be careful, the champion is, is the number one thing to be afraid of right now. It's okay, like, it, it literally is like the bare minimum level of usefulness. But I worry... And really the only thing I worry about right now, uh, because otherwise our stats are relatively competitive, you know, compared to the, the other runs we've had, um, is, is about our HP. Okay, well, we, uh, we'll be able to shoot our way in to get that red heart, which I think is important. I really just wanted to come back and get this, um, this guy's gotta be gone, yeah. I had to come back and get this, uh, item room, of course, before we fought the boss, just in case we end up fighting Ragman or something like that. I'm not trying to say this room is, like, particularly difficult necessarily, but it's not only, like, a semi-large room, but then you're gonna put, like, nine immolated hoppers. They start immolated. Seems a little uncouth. Well, okay. You cannot afford to almost take damage like that. You know what? We lost a spirit heart, or half a spirit heart. The virus is pretty good. Um, I think we will take our opportunity here to shoot this fire. Curse of the Unknown is like the number one destroyer of streak confidence worldwide. You see it in my videos, you'll see it in other people's videos as well. Curse of the Unknown is what frightens you. It is the thing that goes bump in the night. You guys ever watch that TV show when you were a kid? This is one of those moments where I, I bring this up and I know that there's going to be comments like, Holy shit, this completely bizarre, maybe even Canadian, I'm not sure, it might have been American, um, TV show for kids from the mid-1990s. I always wanted to remember the name, but I never could. Bump in the Night, go look it up. It was about trash, I think, or monsters that lived under someone's bed. They sang sometimes. Bump in the Night, anybody? Bueller? You'll, you know what I'm talking about. This guy definitely knows what I'm talking about. I'm trying to think. There's a character. The guy's name might have just been Bumpy. I can't remember. I mean, it's no Kablam. I'm just, you know, I actually have to go to Wikipedia here. Trust me, this. Although it's unprofessional to alt tab over the course of the video, is it unprofessional to fact check? I don't think so, no. Because this is like one of those fever dreams that I had as a child that now I'm trying to remember if it actually happened. Similarly, Tiny Toon Adventures, everyone knows Tiny Toon Adventures. Back in the day, they played the song, Particle Man, Particle Man. And I was like, did I, for 10 years, I was under the impression that I imagined that song. And it turned out to just be like a real song by They Might Be Giants. Bump in the Night TV show. Bump in the Night was an American animated TV series by Danger Productions. It aired on ABC from 1994 to 1995. Mr. Bumpy is a small green purple warded monster living under the bed of a 10 year old boy where he eats dirty socks and dust bunnies as if they were delicacies. His best friends are Squishington, a blue monster that lived in the bathroom's toilet tank, and Molly Coddle, a Frankenstein's monster like. I look at this. A Frankenstein's monster like. But, you know, it's more like a Frankenstein's monster light because it wasn't actually created by Dr. Frankenstein. Anyway. Let's get the hell out of here. We got Torn Photo. Um, well, you know what? Let's not get the hell out of here. We have three bombs, so we should probably make an effort to get a secret room if possible. And actually, it would be fairly easy for us to get over five cents, but I don't know if we have any red hearts. Um, we conceivably could have some red hearts. That's not, um, that's certainly not out of the question. Um, we could have like one spirit heart, one red heart, we could have three spirit hearts, we could have three spirit hearts, a couple, or uh, three spirit hearts, a couple red hearts, but I don't know. Let's just get the hell out of here now. Yeah, I'm content to go. Hopefully, when we go down to the next floor, we don't see that we have half a spirit heart left. Two spirit hearts left. So, did we actually lose one full spirit heart? I suppose we must have, but, um, 
As far as HP goes, this is relatively bad, but at least we're not on the burning basement. And, uh, you know, I I'm happy to have gotten Torn Photo. That's a, it's a pretty incredible item. And if you're asking, why aren't you using uh, how to, uh, or Telepathy for Dummies here? These enemies are, are basically stationary. Let's, you know, pick our battles here. We don't need necessarily need to go over the top on this one. Alright, so there I can I can take the rest of the episode off from commentary. Three spirit hearts in one No, 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 no. That was two spirit hearts, and then the poop that just happened to be next to it had one spirit heart. That is still extremely noteworthy, because the odds of getting spirit heart out of a random poop are What? Two poops next to one another. One spirit heart, one dime. This is actually I mean, I don't know if luck, Lucky Toe has anything to do with this. That's a pretty exceptional uh, degree of, of luck to get there. That is unprecedented on the reward side. And honestly, it doesn't take very much to tip a, a possible loss into a victory. You know what? I think we owe it to ourselves to try to go a little deeper than just a luck upgrade here. Um, sure, Game Kit's probably more useful, so we'll take that for now and reroll the other one. Mom's Wig, I think we can go a little harder here. Um... Book of Shadows, I think, is more useful, and I will start spending money here. Unicorn Horn is not more useful. And we got uh, Lifesteal in the end. So, I actually wish that we'd gone with the Luck Foot, and I kind of thought that maybe that situation would end up happening. But we did get um, Charm of the Vampire and Book of Shadows out of this. So, you're looking at this, you're like, man, you spent three bombs and four cents for not very much reward. Well, we got Lifesteal that may be useless, but we also traded um, our Space Bar item in for a, a better model, I think. In my opinion, at least. So, uh, this is... What I, what I was going to say before we found the item room and it became another little thing in and of itself is that um, it doesn't take much to tilt the equilibrium to turn a possible loss into a, a near-guaranteed win. And honestly, a huge supply of spirit hearts and enough money to buy something or at least some more spirit hearts from the shop can do it. Um, that is pretty ridiculous. I was thinking that might be the second secret room. Maybe Lucky Toe... Um, well, let's try him. Speed up is great. Pretty fly is great. Um, maybe Lucky Toe does give you uh, the chance to get three consumables out of Tinted Rocks, because that time we definitely got um, two Spirit Hearts and a bomb. Got a question mark card. Uh, actually not very useful for us here, Un unfortunately. But um, we do have Blank Rune, and I'm, I'm just saving it. You know, I figure you might as well use it maybe to Perthrow something. But I can't say for certain if that's actually meaningful. I totally forgot. We have uh, the virus, so we actually should walk into enemies and try to um, poison them. Uh, as long as we have Book of Shadows, at least, and, and try to get some demon hearts out of it. And there's a demon heart that we got right there, so that's lovely. The stars at night are big and bright. Da, 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 deep in the heart of Texas. Three red chests. So we got algae's. I wanted to take the stars with me, not to save a key. Ooh, range up's fine. Telepills. All right. Well, that's the ideal room to go to, I suppose. I want to keep the luck, uh, lucky toe, and I want to keep the stars card as a possible teleport. Okay, a little scared there, and I figured we'd just come back in here, grab this, and we'll head down to the next floor. And although I said we'd keep the stars card as a possible tele teleport card for boss rush, you know me. I'm fairly tempted to use it for kind of a cheesy situation, and we found a cheesy situation early on here. Um, we got a pretty fly. We got a lemon party, and then we're just going to bounce. So that was well worth it for the pretty fly. Uh, the D10. This is one of those items that I, I still don't understand fully. Like, I don't, I don't really get where it fits. So, HP-wise, we're a little bit off on this run, but I don't think it's going to last very long. Sure. Why not? Um, when I say, when I say a little off, oh, okay, we're still safe. Ah, we're not safe anymore. Uh, what I mean is that um, we don't we don't have any red hearts, and those are replenishable. So spirit hearts, it's kind of like you know, spirit hearts are like getting a hundred thousand dollars inheritance, and uh, red hearts are like having a well-paying job or a job that pays something, you know, a steady income. Once the spirit hearts are gone, they're gone. Um, the red hearts, however, you know, they, they constantly can replenish themselves. So I'm trying, uh, as you might be guessing here, to use uh, 
the virus to generate some more spirit hearts because we can I mean now the metaphor kind of falls apart because now we're like some kind of killer that goes around murdering our family members in order to um, you know get more inheritances that's not really like the the kind of culture that I'm trying to propagate here but it, it does kind of fit with the metaphor I suppose in the end okay so please just get poisoned and then die and give me the demon hearts that I desire. It doesn't have to give me very many for it to be uh, useful enough to give us a good chance of winning. And you know what? This is a pretty good run for a uh, deal with the angel chance, I think. Kind of feel like this has to be our second secret room. And we don't have special bombs, so let's just go fight the husk. I'm kind of hoping with two bombs left we get a deal with the angel and then... Um, you know, this could be a good Mega Satan run. I've had a fun time on this run so far. We're, you know, nothing there. PJ's, though, is going to take us to full HP. Um, and we, we really got back on the horse as far as, like, uh, you know, being on time for boss rush goes here. But I think uh, I, I've had a great time on this run. Just First off, because we got to talk about Bump in the Night. Yeah, we might as well. And poison bombs are well worth it, I think. Not to mention all the money we got here, but... Um, we got to talk about Bump of the Night, and also... I'm kind of, uh... I'm still amazed at the haul of items that we got... Uh, from a couple of our Tinted Rocks back there. It was pretty ridiculous. I'm trying to think of, like, other kids' shows that we're on. I think it's just, like, you know... you If you're of the age where you're, like, becoming an adult... And by becoming an adult, I don't necessarily mean that you're turning, you know, 18 or, you know, whatever you consider to be an adult in wherever you're from. Um, but I mean to be old enough to remember your childhood. Like, I remember that as being a pivotal moment because I'm a, a, a fucking weirdo. Um, when I turned 16, I was like, man, this is crazy. I can remember f sort of vividly things that happened 10 years ago. And, you know, now I'm 27 near 28 here, and I, I can actually remember things 20 years ago. I can sort of unironically say, oh man, back 20 years ago, things were different. You know, that was 96, baby. Atlanta Olympics. Dominique Dawes. I was, I mean, I wasn't there, but I was watching it on the television. Donovan Bailey, dog. Canada's, you know, sprinter hero. Anyway, um, there's, there's a very easy trap to fall into, and you're gonna fall into it if slash when you go you live in the dorms in college. It's going to be, man, things were so much better back when I was a kid. You're going to spend all your time watching old Nickelodeon TV shows and studying nuclear physics. It's a strange time in the life of any young adult. It's not true. I think that there's a tendency, um, you know, to believe that the times when you were a kid, you know, your golden age, nostalgia goggles come on. You say it's way better than the stupid Peppa Pig shit kids have these days. The truth is... Most content directed at kids from an adult standpoint is not very good. However, I guess in in, in a my slash R, depending on how old you are, uh, day and age, we did have some good stuff that kind of fit the bill, straddled the line, I guess I should say, like Animaniacs, Tiny Toon Adventures, Rocco's Modern Life. I'm not saying I miss them, but I'd give everything in my power to go back. I'm just joking. But I can't complain, man. We're in the golden age of television. Right now, I think, like I, when I was between the ages of like 8 and, I don't know, 25, I mean, a little younger than 25, 8 and 20, let's say, TV was like, you got kicked out of the film industry, all you can do now is, is make television, nobody will ever give you a multi-million dollar budget to work on a film again. We're really, like, that's being reversed now, well, not reversed necessarily, like film is illegitimate, I'm not trying to get into that, but, uh, Bombs are Key is fine. I'm not sure what Blank Rune actually gave me there. Should learn those symbols. But when I watched watched uh, Breaking Bad, it blew me away. I was like, this is an inc this is a story that can only be told through the serial format of television. And that's super freaking cool. I almost dropped the F-bomb there. I apologize. Instead, I said, freaking, pardon my freaking French. Um, I'm not going to go to the arcade because we don't have any red hearts as of yet. But that could change. Uh, like, I've been watching Stranger Things. And, like, that show is the bomb, man. Literally, like... I, it's amazing to me that people can still complain uh, about entertainment or complain about, you know, Netflix raising its prices. I mean, I get that when anything raises its prices, nobody that is just a consumer is going to go out there and be like, yeah, raise your prices. Hilariously on YouTube, and I'm not saying you should be ashamed of yourself, but if I was like, starting tomorrow, Isaac episodes are going to be a dollar each. There is a certain, I would never do this, by the way. It, like, I, I recognize you're cutting off the 
the head of the the community when you do stuff like that. But and not to mention um, if the the negative press I would get for being putting these uh, Isaac episodes on something like YouTube Red. But anyway, ooh, Magic Mush is great here. Um, there would be a certain contingent of people that are like, man's gotta eat. I'm for it. You know, you should charge ten dollars per episode, and I love you guys. Thank you very much for that. But also, you should change your opinion on that. Because I, I just had a bowl of oatmeal crisp. I'm doing just fine. Anyway, um, like Netflix is like ten dollars a month, unlimited entertainment. Probably like thirty percent of movies made in like the last ten years are on Netflix. Yeah, but sometimes they don't have the exact movie I'm looking for, and it's better in other countries. That's true. But their original stuff is so dope. Like the fact that in the last like three years, they've had Orange Is the New Black. Um, ooh, we will take Abaddon. This is this has been a strange one. I guess we will go for the fight here. Uh, they've had you know Orange Is the New Black and Narcos and I'm trying to think of the other Netflix original series that are super popular. I, I've been bringing it up because I just started watching Stranger Things last night, and I'm like Stranger Things is amazing. It's actually, it's like a horror Freaks and Geeks. If you haven't seen Freaks and Geeks, it's also, you know, incredible moving show. Um, but uh, it, it fits the same bill here with Stranger Things. It's, it's extremely interesting. We're going to stick with the Hermit for Boss Rush potential anyway. Back in my day, this is how you know things weren't better back in my day. In Canada, we had two big video chains. We had Blockbuster Video, we had Jumbo Video. Jumbo Video, you like to go to. Because uh, it's the same price as Blockbuster Video. Of course, both of these chains are essentially now defunct. But there are people, when I bring up Jumbo Video, they go, I live in, you know, Nova Scotia. There's still one Jumbo Video in my hometown. And I, I have to admit that, you know, I'm from Ontario. There was one Jumbo Video in my hometown. I think, it, it, as of like 2013 even. But I think now it's, it's gone. Because Netflix is just, you know, so much better. It destroyed it. Feel sorry for the small business owners. People are always gonna need videotapes, they said. Who could have imagined the creation of a device that delivers unlimited movies and television to your home for the price of two movie rentals a month? Anyway, um, yeah, you'd you'd go, you'd be like, hey, that movie looks good, and there, you know, this is like pre-rotten tomatoes, basically. You go and be like, based on the back of the box. And the number of stars that Richard Roper from the Chicago Sun-Times gave it. I think this is a movie that's worth watching. Eight dollars for this movie? I gotta bring it back in two nights? That's fair. Other people need to watch Adam's Family Values. You know, this is the world that we used to live in. So whenever I... In, in Canada, we get a lot of complaining. And it, some of it is valid from people that are like, American Netflix is better. And it's the dang truth. American Netflix is a lot better. Whenever it's, you're gonna find this funny. But when Kate and I are in the U.S., we'll be like, "What should we do tonight?" And if we're if we're not going out, I think we will take paperclip. Then sometimes we just remember, "Oh shit!" American Netflix. We can watch uh, Jackson Galaxy's The Cat Whisperer or My Cat Is From Hell, whatever that show's called. Anyway, but it's it's easy to forget that not long ago. It was like, even when I was in college, which is literally six to ten years ago, um, you were going to the video store to rent videos. Or engaging with like the, the wild west of online streaming. We've come a long way. It's much better this way. The amount of content you guys are, and, and myself included, because I'm uh, not yet a walking corpse, believe it or not. It's amazing. I just think you should, you know, should be more appreciative of it. If you had told people in 1995, I re recognize we're getting into get off my lawn territory or like back in my day, blah, 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 sort of territory. But if you had told me back in like the year 2005, you'd be like, hey, how about for $12 a month, we'll give you HD streaming of, you know, pretty much every movie that's come out in recent memory. And I'd be like, first off, what's HD? You talking 360p or are we going all the way up to 720i here? And they'd be like, no, nah, like some of the shit is in 4K, and you're, I mean, you're, it's gonna be ten times more detailed? That's ridiculous. How could something possibly be ten times more detailed than 360p? I'm already seeing all of the pixels. There's no more data to transmit. Um, but I would be like, that's incredible. We must live in some kind of cybernetic utopia. What year, when does this come out? The year 2090? And they'd be like, nah, it's like a 2009 jam. 
I'd be like, that's amazing. So people must never complain about anything. They'd be like, nah, you know, you remember Marvel? You know, they kind of fell into disrep or disreputation uh, lately as a result of uh, some comics that didn't necessarily do so well. Yeah, I've heard of them, you know, the Spider-Man guys. Yeah, well, they brought all your favorite superhero movies together. Um, and, you know, they made, like, really, really critically acclaimed, good-budget, uh, mature versions of them. they become the most successful films in the world, but they're not all on Netflix, like, the month after they come out. So, people are pretty pissed about that. I would be like, we don't deserve to live on this beautiful Earth. But we do. So, we let's make the best of it. Um, we got a Hermit card, and we got a Hermit card. Two of Spades is fine, but relatively useless. Uh, this run is, like, it's just going real well right now. The big uh, transition for us from, like, decent run that we'd probably win into a uh, great run that we're almost certainly going to win definitely came in that Magic Mush, like, Abaddon setup that we got earlier. But I do want to point out, you can't shit on, um, well, you can, but I think it's ill-advised, uh, the virus. Kind of a surprising, like, out-of-left-field uh, item room pickup for us early on. And uh, it's it's done great work in, in allowing us to kind of finance our uh, operations here with some extra demon hearts. Uh, I'd like to hermit card out and then use the emperor to maybe skip the cathedral, but we'll see. I don't want to skip a floor that can give us a deal with the devil, because this may well be a mega satan run. Um, there's options is fine, deep pockets is fine, we've donated as much as we can. Move along here, um... Whew, a little close for comfort, but that's okay. We got a very good chance of being able to uh, make it out of boss rush. As long as we get into the boss fight, I mean, I wish we had an orbital to make it easier, but I was gonna say, as long as we get into the boss fight with like 45 seconds to go, we should be fine. And uh, it appears that will be the case here. Perfect timing there. Chosen correctly. Holy Light really amps up the speed at which we can get through this stuff. Um, especially when we hit the, the segments that come out of the wall. This makes life that much easier. We didn't even need 45 seconds, we needed like maybe 15. Grab this, get the Polaroid. Uh, the wafer is basically GG. If you were holding out hope that we were going to throw this run and just ruin it, um, you should tune into the next episode. But before you go, make sure to click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. Um, but sincerely, we, we have too much going for us from a defensive standpoint to be stopped, I think, at this point. Um, probably. Probably. We'll see, though. Probably, it, it doesn't feel like a hush run. No, we also had Nod Leaf, which is fine, by the way. We don't have any, um... We don't have any, uh... Orbitals, so... We miss out a little bit in that department. I can wait for them to die. That's fine by me. Probably the most metal thing I've ever said. I can wait for them to die. That was meant to be Werner Herzog. Not a great impression. I'm no Paul F. Tompkins. Okay. I wonder if, um, com uh, here's the thing I don't know, and you'll have to tell me about this, um, and you may have to tweet me, in order to get, I only remember things in tweet form, that's the true, you know, dystopian nature of our present societies, I only remember things if there are 140 characters or less, but, we have poison bombs, we have the virus, and we have common cold, so we got a lot of different poisons going for us, does the virus allow us, um, and we have Bob's brain. But does the virus allow us to get demon hearts from any source of poison? Or does it actually have to be um, just the poison that we get for running into an enemy? Because if so, we should really run into enemies. A oh, you know what? Maybe the virus also works latently. Like if we infect them with the virus, then if they die at any point of in the future, they can give us a demon heart. I'm just not sure about the, the intricacies of the virus, I suppose. Either way, it's it's keeping us at full HP here, which is nice, but... I'm gonna be real with you. There's no way we need 17 keys. So I'm not going back for that other key, or that one for that matter. You might say, why not? Why not? We have, um... We have the, uh, the lockpick. I, I actually can't think of a conceivable situation in which we could spend 17 keys. The, the most likely one... I don't know how we didn't get hit there. Definitely go Halo. The most likely scenario, good breath of life, is that we would um, use a, a different trinket, so we get rid of this, and then we get like 20 golden chests. And I guess then I'll be pissed. 
Anyway, we're going to head down to the next floor here. Uh, I think we're probably going to do this one, but we'll see what curse it is. Curse of Darkness is a curse that's okay to handle. Like, I'm not pissed off about having to handle Curse of Darkness. Um, and we probably won't do Hush, just because our run is not necessarily Hush-suited. Which is basically my way of saying, I don't think the damage is, is good enough, but... Surely we could get more items down there. It's not it's not an unviable strategy, as long as we can win. But uh, I'm more interested right now in... Uh, in doing the Mega Satan fight. And doing one may preclude us from doing the other one. Depending on how our HP uh, shakes out over the course of it. But um, this is looking real likely to be win 35? 34? So it's somewhere in there. Yera. I forgot we had deep pockets. You know what? Um, I'm, I'm going to take the damage. I think that's fine. We got hearts back there we can grab. And we can probably get more in the future as well. You know what? We could come across eight double key rooms. That is a, that's a theoretical possibility. We could come across a bunch of locks. I guess that's the other way that we could uh, find ourselves in a bit of a shitty situation there. Ooh, there we go. Back to full HP very quickly. Wow! The, thank God I didn't use the Emperor on this floor. I didn't realize how close we were to the boss fight. Kind of a, a little bit of a truncated floor, but I'm for it either way. Much like I'm for the... ABC television show Bump in the Night that ran from 1995 to 1996. By the way, uh, my apologies for the false positive on saying that Bump in the Night is Canadian. You do, you just, as a Canadian, you start to become acclimated to things being Canadian. For a while, I thought that Pengu was Canadian. Turns out it's just distributed in Canada by a Canadian film distributor, which makes a lot of sense. I don't know why I would even bother fighting another angel statue. At this point, it's just for bragging rights. There you go. We got absolutely nothing as a result. Uh, we're going to head up and we're going to use the uh, Emperor card. And let's not forget to use Yera here. But then sometimes you're like, man, I forgot Neil Young. He's Canadian. You know, it just happens. I don't know why the Canadians seem to have such a relatively high proportion of, you know, incidents in the entertainment industry of... United States of America. I guess it's because, you know, even though we're a small uh, country population-wise, we're really close to Los Angeles. <laughs> so we can we can still get down there. You know, and we're really close to Nashville. So Shania Twain can fly down. Alan Jackson, definitely not Canadian. Shania Twain, though, Canadian. We're really close to the Arctic Circle, so uh, Celine Dion can go... Uh, Play uh, My Heart Will Go On up there, of course, as we all know. Now, so you had to know Celine Dion was Canadian. Did you know Alanis Morissette is Canadian? Isn't that ironic? Probably not. It's more of a coincidence, really. Well, it's not even a coincidence. It's more of a conception, really. Um, sure. SMB Superfan. Maybe Beelzebub? Nah. Scapular. Scapular will work because we have... Um, because we have... The Wafer. I will take Libra, because I'm an idiot, and uh, let's take little Gertie, and I'm just going to go fight Mega Satan right now. I don't know if Libra is going to work out in our favor. My guess is that it probably will not, um, but I don't think it's going to penalize us too much. You know, we have had three all-stat upgrades, so I don't think that um, we're going to be too far behind the eight ball as far as our damage goes. And really, like, to be real with you, if we're being real with one another, okay, if we're actually going to be honest... Holy Light is the all-star of this one. I wanted to... <laughs> I, if I had to describe my uh, my brand of humor as an Isaac episode re reaches its conclusion, it's probably saying things just enough times to be annoying once. If something's annoying once, it's still funny. If something's annoying multiple times, they say, get out of my house. Yeah, yeah, hack! Okay, what's going on here, though? Don't break the laws of physics on my watch, mister. Gotta be real with you. Uh, it does appear that Libra has probably made us worse here. Which is not a surprise in the least. And the big pickup that we got out of eight chests. Well, it might be scapular if it ends up keeping us alive. But I doubt that it's going to come to that level. Um, but is uh, the Revenge Fly. It's actually a great item. I really like Revenge Fly. But um, I wish that we had maybe picked up something a little bit more interesting. I mean, SMB Superfan is not bad. Of course. 
I don't think it's particularly good, but not bad. But the the all-star of this run, I know I've talked about, you know, the virus, but it may actually end up, at least on this Mega Satan fight specifically, being the wafer. You know, we'd, we'd be in a much scarier position HP-wise if I didn't have the wafer, but, uh, hey! Let's just chalk that one up as one of the rare runs in which um, it actually made a substantially meaningful difference to go to boss rush. Our HP would um, certainly be a lot scarier if we had not gone to boss rush, so that way for pickup was huge. Now, you can't use that as validation for like every time you go to boss rush, it's worth it, but certainly I think this time it was. And the other option there was Nod Leaf, which also could have been fine for us with Revenge Fly, but I digress. Um, I do wish that Revenge Fly would be a little bit smarter in the target selection department, but that's okay. Life goes on. I can't believe I still have this Bump in the Night Wikipedia article up on my other tab. I can't really read it. It just says something about Mr. Bumpy's Karaoke Cafe. Which is, sounds like an old San Francisco dive bar. Mr. Bumpy's Karaoke Cafe. Anyway, that was a great run. I had a good time with it. I hope you did as well. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. And I will see you next time.